Vector knew that the sinking land bridge idea would violate isostasy, and so he thought that um, the continents probably did actually move apart from each other. And his mechanism for how this would work uh, is shown in this little sketch here, where you've got continents, you know, here's two of them, and some seafloor. And he actually thought the continents would somehow plow through the seafloor. Um, and because, you know, the mantle is viscous. Now, the problem with this is that the frictional resistance that you'd encounter pushing a giant continent over the ocean floor is enormous. Um, and think of trying to push a carpet across your floor just by shoving on one end of it. You'd never be able to do it. It wouldn't work. Um, and not only that, but but his his idea that maybe solid earth tides is the thing that would drive this didn't really work either because um, some other geophysicists like Harold Jeffries could calculate that if solid earth tides were strong enough to move continents, then actually the earth's rotation would stop in less than a year, and also mountains would probably collapse under their own weight. Um, so the geophysicists knew that his model wasn't going to work, um, but they basically just dismissed the fact that that the contracting earth hypothesis had a bunch of internal contradictions and it couldn't work either. And so it's a little bit surprising actually that, that nobody kept hammering about this, I think. Um, Arthur Holmes actually proposed around about the same time that convection in the mantle could drive continents to move. Um, and that's actually not so far wrong from the way we picture it today. But it's interesting that nobody ever took that idea and ran with it either.